Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach, episode number 52. Today, we're talking about your professional development, how to find personalized professional development as a tech coach. I have a fantastic guest on the program. He is from the great state of Texas, Mr. Claudio Zavala, Jr. Claudio, how are you today? Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I am doing well and uh, enjoying this great evening. How about yourself? I am doing absolutely fantastic. We are here talking all about personalized professional development. We're going to get into a lot of different things. And the reason why we're doing this topic is because right around the corner, three weeks from today, in fact, is the launch of ISTE 2019 in Philadelphia. I'm going to be there. I know you're going to be there. What are you looking forward to this year at ISTE? Oh, I'm looking forward to just getting to meet more people in person and actually being in Philadelphia for the first time. I've never been there, so I'm pretty excited about, about going there. Oh, I am so looking forward to getting back into the city, the city that I'm from, the city that I love. It is so nice to see 20,000 educators all coming together to figure out how to help out our students, how to best give each other professional development. And Claudio, I know you're doing some sessions this year. What are you going to be doing? I'm doing two sessions that I got written in. Uh, one is a creative creative storytelling with Adobe Spark, and that's I think it's on Monday. I don't know, remember the exact times and location. Uh, Wednesday I'll be doing a Flipgrid live panel with a group of my friends, and then I will also be out and about doing some different things with Adobe as well at their theater, and then I'll be doing some things with uh, IST as well, doing some Instagram takeover. You are doing some great stuff on Instagram. And of course, uh, anybody that's looking to connect with Claudio, where can we find you, man? You can find me at Instagram at Claudio Zavala Jr. Same place on Twitter at Claudio Zavala Jr. And then you can check out my website, IamClaudius.com. And then lastly, all I want to share is my YouTube channel. So just go to YouTube and look up I am Claudius and look for the, the guy with the ball cap. Guys, we want to know if you are going to ISTE because TeacherCast is doing some great things. If you're going to be going there early, and look, guys, I really do mean early. You know, ISTE basically says it starts from Monday to Wednesday, but there's stuff on Sunday. There's stuff on Saturday. My goodness, there's even stuff on Friday, and I don't mean the cheesesteaks. I am going to be there all day on Saturday giving two, not one, but two workshops. At 8.30 in the morning, we're going to be doing our educational podcasting workshop. It's going to be a three-hour hands-on how to make a podcast, how to work with it in your classrooms. We're going to talk about equipment, I even have a few special guests lined up to come and talk to you guys all about filmmaking and you never know what kind of surprises and giveaways we have. That's Saturday morning at 8.30, our educational podcasting workshop. Always a, a great time. And then at 12.30, this is the one that I'm really, really excited about. Claudia, we are doing our Ask the Tech Coach educational hands-on mastermind workshop. Oh my gosh, awesome. Where we are going to be helping you guys learn what does a tech coach do? Now, who is this workshop for? If you're a new tech coach, a beginning one going into your first year, if you are a, a first or second year tech coach, this is a great workshop for you because we're going to talk about the position, how to get it, how to get your hands wet, how to make friends, how to interact with, with teachers and administrators. And you know what? If you're an experienced tech coach and you've been tech coaching for the last five or six or seven years, this is also the workshop for you because we are going to be doing a hands-on workshop on how to create our ed tech integration plan. You know, we've been talking talking about it for the last couple months here on our podcast and we even have an online course. We are bringing this experience to ISTE this year. Come on out. It's going to be Saturday morning at 12:30 to I think it's 3:30. Um we are doing our Ask the Tech Coach workshop. I am looking so forward to that. And if you're going to be out there at ISTE and you can't make it for the Saturday show, check us out. We're going to be running all around with our podcasting gear, working for Microsoft Education, hanging out at the Podcaster booth, and doing some more great things. So we want to know what you guys are doing. You can always find us on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach and use the, use the hashtag ISTE. We want to know what you guys are doing, and we would love to meet you guys. We want to make as many friends as in the Tech Coaching Network as possible. Claudio, I'm always looking 
forward to ISTE because I get a chance to meet you and every other Twitter square. I always say it's like watching those avatars start to move. It's really, they really start cool. To, they start to come in, they start to come to life. They that's do. Really like, you, they you do. Walk, you walk around with your hands in a circle and it's like, hey, that's you. That's and your I, profile. <laughs> and I don't know about you. I have a problem whenever I go to ISTE. The, the pinky on my right hand always twitches because like whenever I meet somebody, I always want to hit the enter key whenever I finish t- talking to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tap. Reply. Tap. Yes. Tap. Reply. reply. C- command. Command. Return. All, all of those different little keyboard shortcuts. Guys, it is going to be a fun time at ISTE. In only three weeks, we are getting our website ready. I don't know if you guys noticed, but TeacherCast.net has been completely redesigned and... Uh, we're working really hard to give you guys a great experience. So come on out. Again, our workshops are Saturday morning at 8.30 for the podcasting one, Saturday at 12.30 for the tech coach one, and we are going to do a one-hour a one hour podcasting. Uh, they call it a lecture, but I'm going to make it a workshop um, on, I believe it's 2.30 on Monday. Um, and if you're not at the dentist, 2.30 for us too. So that was our bad joke of the day. Now, <laughs> yeah. there are other great things we're going to be talking about as we go through the podcast, but today we're really going to be talking about that personalized PD. And that brings us, Claudio, to our tech tip of the week. What is our tech coach tip of the week? It is. Well, here you go. Tech coaches and professional development specialists are often the ones called upon to be the master encyclopedias of 21st century learning. But it's also important to remember that tech coaches need professional development themselves. Often at a much higher level, it's important that we support all learning styles in our school districts as well as skill levels. And that's so important. You know, the reason why we're here today, the reason TeacherCast exists is because eight years. Oh, my goodness. Eight years ago. You know, going to the local camps, going to my district's PD wasn't cutting it for me. I needed to find a way to bring in professional development at a little bit higher level. I wanted to get more interaction. And so I created my own professional development. And in fact, even this recording is my own professional development. Claudia, let me ask you, why is it important for tech coaches to keep up with their own personalized professional development well i think you were kind of saying it a lot of times is you you aren't getting what you need where you're at and so you really have to go out and kind of uh develop yourself you have to go look for what you need what are your needs what are you looking for and i think uh one who wants to get better that's one way to do it i mean i i my analogy is to a doctor you want to you want to go to a doctor that continues to study practice medicine so ourselves you know we want to continue practicing you know pedagogy practicing what we integrate into the classroom as far as technology so uh, i think it's super important to go out there and just learn as much because things change and yes. it's almost daily changing so you kind of have you have to keep up and, and i understand that as a tech coach and look you know we're all tech coaches here it's important that we're at school. It's important that we're working with our teachers. It's important that we're in the classrooms. But I, I hear this thing over and over again where the tech coaches say, I can't go to this conference because I'm needed in the district. And I'm going, all right, there's a place for that. There's a, there, there is a place for being in the district, but there's many different things that a tech coach should be doing. And we're going to go over our five favorites here for getting those professional developments. Now, the easy one here is social media. Uh, Let's just start with the question. Should social media be an acceptable way of professional learning? I think so. Absolutely. I mean, that's pretty much kind of how I got my start as far as uh, getting, getting my website going jumping onto YouTube and things like that is through social media, people encouraging me and connecting with others who, uh, you know, I see people that are creating amazing things, doing amazing things like yourself. And you're like, okay, I I need to reach out to them. I need to connect with them and learn from them. And uh, it's been a huge, huge boost to, to my learning. Um, I think I've learned a lot more through Twitter in the last, uh, gosh, five years that I've learned like locally (laughs) Twitter is, I I always describe it as it's the professional development conference that doesn't end. Right. And the fact that you you're now doing videos and the edu gifts and, 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 you know, everything is now available right there. Guys, I understand if you're not 24 a Twitter hours. person, 24 hours, right? It is yeah. a mind mess. If you're not paying attention to it, or if you're not quite familiar with how to, how to sort those things, 
But, you know, as Claudio said, I, I come home from work every day and the first thing I do is I pull up YouTube, you know, and as I'm eating dinner or as I'm as I'm kind of detoxing, I'm watching through different videos and I'm it's my personalized learning. And Twitter is the same thing. You find a hashtag, you follow a hashtag. It is so important. You go down, you go down rabbit, tri- rabbit, rabbit holes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and right. And you you. That is the problem, right? We get burned out. We get overwhelmed. We figure these things. And a lot of times, you know, it's the opposition. Like an administrator might say, well, Twitter doesn't count because it's X, Y, and Z. And, you know, really what they're saying is, I don't get it. So you must not be able to get it also. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with that. And and it's like, it's not, it's not specific to what we're doing here. And you're like, well, you know, if I'm a teacher and I'm, working in a classroom and I, for example, I want to learn to use Flipgrid for my language arts class. Well, there are so many people posting and sharing things that they're doing in language arts with Flipgrid, for example. Well, I can learn that and use it and take it to my classroom. Whereas like if I go to a PD workshop after school, they may not, it may not be specific to what I'm looking for and what I'm needing for that next day. You know, the other day, Casey Bell over at shakeuplearning.com came out with an interesting post about using podcasts for PD. And this is a topic that we've struggled with here on TeacherCast of after listening to a show, should I give you a Google form where I can then autocrat a certificate? And does that matter? Who's going to count it? How do I know that you've listened to five minutes or an hour? What's your thought on this? I mean, okay, if we're going to be saying that social media... Uh, as a as an umbrella is mm-hmm. professional development and you know many of us are teacher contracted people we've got the 100 hours we've got a whatever we need how how as how can i as a content provider help you get your hours but how can i as a content uh, user l- listener yeah. um d- get do i do i need to worry about getting credit for this i, I you know I, it's not i don't know if it's a about worrying about it, but I think uh, there is value in what you're offering. It's either through a podcast or through someone watching a, a YouTube video that, um, like for example, um, the Ditch Summit that Matt Miller does. I mean, he also provides people with with a, a certificate of, of completion that they've attended this. So I think it would be comparable to listening to a podcast. You're learning content. I, th- I would say definitely. I mean, it, if no one's doing it, that's something you could definitely start. It's like, hey, you listen to this podcast, check out, go to this, go to my site and click here for the to complete a certificate or something like that. You know, if you're in a district that allows Twitter chats, Facebook conversation, any you know, podcasting, anything, if you're in a district that has the policy where that is fair game for professional development, guys, I would love to hear from you. Please reach out to us on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach. Let me know. Um, you know, you could use the hashtag podcast edu or podcast PD. We don't really uh, segregate any of those things, but we'd love to let, you know, we'd love to let the world know about this stuff. So, you know, let us know over on at Ask the Tech Coach on Twitter, is your district allowing a show like this to be counted as professional development? Now, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, Claudia and I were going to be talking about five things that we as tech coaches can do to engage ourselves in professional learning. So stick around. We'll be right back with Ask the Tech Coach. This is episode number 52. We'll be right back. Friends, before we move on with our show, I wanted to let you guys know I have been in education now for almost 20 years, and I've seen the changes some students have come to face every single day, whether it's going through school hungry, not being able to see a doctor when they're sick, or not getting the proper rest at night. These challenges make it hard for kids to focus on their learning. I remember a story of a student who came to my office one day and she could barely stay awake due to all the circumstances happening around her at home that were beyond her control. I didn't know what I could do and I wanted to be able to help her out in any way that I could. Thankfully, Concordia University in Portland is leading the way with their three to PhD program that helps to combat students' fears 
freeing them to pursue their highest dreams. They're revolutionizing education by creating a holistic model that provides groceries, health care, and even clothing to students right here on campus, helping them thrive and helping our communities strengthen and grow. Concordia's College of Education offers online and on-campus programs where students have the opportunity to learn about a more compassionate approach to education and see how nurturing the whole student can lead to amazing things. To learn more about how you can help students conquer their monsters and achieve their highest dreams, visit cu-portland.edu forward slash let's conquer. That's cu-portland.edu forward slash let's conquer. And we're, use the hashtag nature, educate, grow. And we are back here at Ask the Tech Coach. All of our links, all of our stuff that we're going to be discussing today is over on our archives at askthetechcoach.com. This is, of course, episode number 252. I'm sitting here with the great Claudio Zavala Jr. And, you know, I got to ask you, did you have a good school year? It's been busy. I see you've been traveling. How was your school year? I think school year was, you know, has it had its challenges this year, and I think as every year, there's always some challenges that uh, I think for me, what I've gained from those challenges is obviously learning from them and taking a different approach this coming school year. Um, now, I still continue to work throughout the summer, so I don't have the uh, the benefit like my wife gets to stay home when I go to work, and uh, a little bit jealous, but um, it's been a great year and. For me, my goal here this summer is to just really kick it into high gear on learning more and really creating more content to share out with others. What kind of content are you going to be focused on? You've got a pretty active Instagram, and I know you love doing YouTube. So, yes, uh, YouTube is one of the things I'm really going to push a little more, creating content there. But another thing I'm working on is actually creating an online class, an online course. Uh, I think what I'm going to start with is a little series of photography classes. Nice. Teaching you how to use either Photoshop or different tools and uh, just improve your photos, different ways to edit. So that's kind of one of my goals is to get done over the summer and hopefully have it ready for uh, the start of the school year. Now, now I'm going to, I'm going to ask you the wrong question. I want to ask you the tool question before I ask you the reasons why, but uh, what platform are you looking at to actually create your course around? Uh, looking at different ones, uh, teachables one, and uh, I've connected with uh, one that may be coming out soon. I'm not at liberty to say just yet, but uh, uh, those two I'm looking at at the moment. Nice. So um, if we're looking to figure out more about our photography skills, uh, where again can we go to find out more? Uh, You can check me out on IamClaudius.com. Excellent. And of course, all the archives today are going to be over at AskTheTechCoach.com. We are today talking about five things that we as tech coaches can do to engage ourselves in professional learning. And we've already mentioned the first one, right? Attending conferences. And I get it. Right, let's just start off the bat here yeah. saying to go to an ISTE conference is expensive. Even for myself, who this year, it's a drive, not yeah. a flight. You're still talking hotel and food, food. and 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 y- y- you never know what, what else mm-hmm. is going to be coming up here. New shoes, right? Yes. But there's several different types of conferences. What are some of the things that you're doing, maybe locally, um, and, and what can a teacher or a tech coach out there look at as far as conferences go? Well, definitely – I would say attending is is a great thing, but I think even if you're a tech coach and venture out and take a risk and even present, pro- enter, uh, submit proposals to present, you start at your local conference. I mean, that's one of the things I did is there are several local ones here in the, the DFW area. Uh, really, I'm about supporting your local conferences, the local state one here, TCEA, but find what's what's in your state or even what's in your community, what's in your area. Attend those uh, conferences, whether they're ad camps or kind of like a, a district conference, the neighboring districts that have them. Definitely go check those out, support them, and then I definitely say present. Get yourself in there and present. Um, it, you know, it's nerve-wracking, but you'll get it done and you'll learn from that experience. And I'm going to add on to that present but don't over present because there's yes, look, let's yes. be honest when you present in front of your district it's different it's just a different feeling than when you go it to is. an ed camp and definitely a different experience than when you go to an ISTE conference right yes those are three little there's a three different levels of oh my goodness yeah 
don't make the mistake that I will totally be honest and say I make, which is I'll go to an ed camp. And if it's a four session ed camp, I will probably present three times. Yeah. If and, and then I'll like talk to people in the hallways. The reason why we go to these conferences. Yeah, it's to sh- it's to, to, to present, to try some ideas. Maybe you take something that you're doing in your school and you really like it test it out at an ed camp and then you bring it back. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. the reason why we go to these conferences is to see other presenters at whatever level, you know, maybe somebody is doing a conference or a session on Instagram. Go listen for the Instagram stuff, but also take a look at what that presenter is doing, how the presenter is presenting, what materials go and actually study other presenters. That's going to help you out. I know the best way that I present, uh, pre, you know, prepare for ISTE is I go to other conferences and I start watching what these bigger speakers do. And that's been helping me prepare for my, for my ISTE workshops. Totally, totally agree. I, I'm 100% on that. Uh, definitely go check others out. Uh, different strategies that they use, uh, how they, how they, uh, get their audience into their session. How do they, you know, get people moving around? That's one of the things that when I go and I see people I'm like, Hey, there, this is a lively session. Uh, when I presented with, with friends and, um, it's like, Hey, I need to do my session a little more like this. Maybe add some music to it. Let's get, let's go jump out of our chairs and dance or something like that. So the first thing that we want to encourage you guys to do is attend conferences and look i'll even add on that you can do the virtual stuff too i mean the the whole hashtag not at isti or maybe they're going to do not at isti 19 i'm not sure yet but but those are great ways to keep yourself engaged in conference learning now the second thing of course is to engage with other tech coaches and there's several great ways that you can do that subscribing to this very podcast is great but what are some of the ways claudia that you engage yourself with other technology coaches Oh, definitely. Well, the, I think you've already said pretty much that it, it's the, the social media is a huge. That's first and foremost, but uh, definitely a meeting a person face to face. You know, it's something different from seeing them on social media. But when you see them in person, you're like, oh my gosh, that's you. Um, definitely meet the person. And um, I think I've grown up was a really shy person, and you may not believe it or not, but um, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go up and meet as many people as you can. I think just connect with as many people as you can. I kind of think of it, you know, you, you may get a hundred connections of people, but out of those a hundred, you may get a, a, a good solid five ten that are going to be like people you can, you can constantly uh, send messages to and connect with um, and even have, go have dinner with. I find it ISTE and other conferences, you know, we, we all, to use the phrase, we all get out of bed the same way. Right. We're all here trying to figure out how to help each other. The Twitter conversations are great. There are several Google groups out there for technology coaches. Our good friend Lynn Hilt from Modern Learners puts out a good one. Um, I know that uh, Jenna Lee, uh, which is Jenny and Silly Clark. Um, yes. I think I might have said their names backwards, but you know what I mean? Um, yes. they, they've got a great uh, tech coach network that they're starting up. So if you're looking to get into a tech coaching network, let us know. We've got some great links and we can hook you up with those people. Um, you know, you already mentioned Flipgrid's a great yeah. is, is a great opportunity well, out there. Absolutely, and I was going to say, kind of piggyback on on Flipgrid here is you know connect with them and they have these uh, ambassador programs. So find the different ones that have ambassador programs. And a lot of times the people that are joining those are tech coaches as well. Many teachers, obviously, but there's a large group uh, that are ed tech coaches and definitely you can, uh, you can learn from them, connect with them and gain resources as well. And I think the last thing I always say is, is create a group, right? In, in North Jersey, uh, Nick and I put together with, a, with other tech coaches, something called the NJ10, New Jersey Tech Educators okay. Network. And, you know, once a month we get out of class on a Friday and we go meet and we have a nice face-to-face meeting. And there's like 40 school districts that, you know, depending on where we are, they kind of rotate membership and stuff. Anything that you can do just to sit in a room with somebody and go, Claudio, I've got a teacher that has this issue. What do you suggest? Yeah, right. Totally. Totally. Anything. You know, it's, it's sometimes it's BSing about technology and it's fine. You yeah. got to have that outlet. So attending conferences, engaging with other tech coaches. They're the first two things we're going to recommend. Now, the next ones are kind of more personalized and I, I'll say personalized for me and for you, but yes. um, what's the what's the third thing that we might want to do here? Well, starting a blog, 
a podcast or even a YouTube you know, vlogging channel, either of those, um, what it does, it just, it, it helps you get your ideas, uh, out there. Um, and it also helps you kind of organize yourself. I think for me, when I started blogging, it was actually like three years ago that I started and then I kind of faded away. And then through engaging with other coaches and like, you know, Hey, Claudio, you're sharing some great stuff. Why don't you blog about it? And, uh, it, it for me, it's a struggle to get writing out there. Cause it's takes a lot longer for me. I like, I rather, you know, putting a video is quicker and, and easier for me, but putting, writing something down, it really does help me get my thoughts out and really kind of, um, uh, kind of say sharpen what I'm thinking. And, and, and really what we're talking about here is becoming a content creator. And if you become exactly. a content creator, it just strengthens the opportunities for number one, getting into present at these bigger conferences. And then number two, rubbing elbows with other tech coaches that you happen to meet in the hallway. So everything here is kind of circular. And I got to tell you, you know, again, the reason why you're listening to this, the reason why we're here is because eight years ago, I needed more professional development. And somebody basically said, go build it yourself. Yeah. And I haven't slept since. Yeah. But the whole idea of just creating this content, it helps you. It helps your teachers. It helps your community. And you become, you know, part of the community versus somebody who might be new or looking in. And, you know, really, it's the idea of pick a medium and go for it. Now, I picked podcasting, but I do some writing on the side. Uh, Claudio, are you more Instagram with a YouTube background, or are you considering yourself YouTube with an Instagram background? I think I'm thinking kind of blending both. Main, you know, that's kind of where I'm kind of shooting as that as they're kind of simultaneous for me. Um, obviously, Instagram is more of a daily thing. There's it's a lot easier to put an image out there, uh, put your thoughts out there. YouTube is making a video; it's a little more work. Um, but one thing I wanted to say about YouTube as well, so, you know, if you're starting to create content, um, ultimately for me, it's one of the things that my goal is to share content. I love to teach. I love to, to sh show people how to create things. And that's ultimately my goal when I create these videos. Now, if some w way down the road, it, I, I can make some money from it. Hey, that's great. But that's like right now, it's like, hey, I just want to put this stuff out there. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll back that one, too. Don't do this for money. Like if it happens, great. If something takes off, great. If you stumble on a topic and next thing you know, you're the, uh, you know, iPad boy, great. Whatever works, right? But don't, don't, you know, too many podcasts just make, make one show and then say, how do I find a sponsor? Yeah. Just you're doing it for professional learning. You're doing it for your own professional development. Now you and I both have a goal here, which is going to be number four, mm -hmm. um, I'll let you introduce what number four is. So number four, this is a this is kind of a little bit of a, a long term goal, but is writing a book, putting something out there. Um, there's so many different uh, things that in my head right now. It's like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. But uh, it's one of my goals is is putting a sharing a book, and one is more on the how to side, and another one is more of like taking risk side. So it's like two books in my mind right now. And, you know, I, this is something that's been on my bucket list since before the kids were born five and a half years ago. Um, you know, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, we, I keep saying this to I, I, my, my whole point is if I keep saying it to people, I'll just end up doing it. And I've already got 25,000 words written on on how to make a podcast. And so you never know. You might yeah. see a, a podcasting book come out there. You know what? Would you guys, I'm just going to stop right here. Would you guys like to see a how to do educational podcasting book? come out of the teacher cast world. If you would let me know, you can always find us over here at ask the tech coach. I would love to actually get you guys feedback. Would you guys support an educational podcasting book? What would be on it? What would you like to see on it? It's going to be a long summer. Um, keep me busy here. What, 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 what would you like to see if teacher cast created an educational podcasting book and how, what can we do for you in that, in that medium? So we have attending conferences, engaging tech coaches, blogging, podcasting, YouTubing, creating a book, all that great stuff is going to wrap into what's the last thing here? The last thing was meetups. And so I kind of added this here is it, it stemmed from this. Uh, I had a meetup with this photography group It's you know, really not, I guess, instructional. It was educational for me because I was with other photographers learning the craft from others, watching others. Um, so I think, 
taking that and kind of having an ed tech meetup, you know, I, I we have those at, at IST at conferences. Hey, we're having a coffee EDU. You know, I just can't get up at five in the morning to go get that early, but, um, you know, meetups on a, on a weekend or something like that. Hey, we're going to go and meet up and we are going to talk, talk shop or something or, or just have, get to know others. And maybe, maybe there are tech coaches that want to learn, you know, video tips, photography tips, podcasting tips, and you can meet up on a certain topic and you're like at some location, uh, and share your ideas. You know, I mentioned a few minutes ago that Nick and I do this NJ 10 group. And the reason why I wanted to separate meeting is a group of tech coaches and meetups is because professional development doesn't have to be about education. It doesn't have to be about tech coaching or ed tech. The idea of just getting together with a group of people on anything that you can learn from or a trade or a skill is extremely important. Um, You know, if there's anything that you're interested in, go find a meetup, go to one or two meetings just to see if it wets your whistle a little bit. You know, professional learning does not have to be tech coach 24 seven. And in fact, I always find it's good to get away from things. And I'll give you another example here. Everybody says, well, what educational podcasts do you listen to? And I'm like, When I'm in the car, I try to get away from podcast world as much as possible. So that way, when I do sit behind the mic, it's fresh for me. I know where I am and I'm I'm focused. I'm not thinking about listening to so-and-so else's podcast in my head. I I always try to keep a fresh perspective of things. I don't know. What's your philosophy on non-educational activities? Well, that for me, that was kind of non-educational, getting out of, you know, uh, iPads, getting out of uh, I have to create this lesson. So it's just, yeah, definitely. I totally agree. Going somewhere and out of, out of, get out of your, your comfort zone, uh, to paint, get together with a group of educators and go paint, go work on a uh, hiking or something like that. So, so those are our five things. We want to know what you guys think about this list. Please tweet at us over at ask the tech coach uh if you want to reference ask the tech coach episode 52 all the links are going to be in here i want to wrap up with this one point because this is really the nail on the head here i think i said that right what can school districts do to support tech coaches with their higher level pds this seems like a no-brainer yeah. not everyone's doing it the right way what can school districts do to support all of this professional development that really we could all soak up extremely easily. Oh my gosh. That, it, it is. That's a tough question to answer. And only that a lot, you know, it does take money. Do you want to send your people to a conference? Uh, first and foremost, obviously if it's local, if it's in your state, definitely invest in that. Cause I see it as an investment, not only for them, but also for your district, because they're going to go learn and they're going to bring that learning back and teach the other teachers, and it's ultimately going to get back to the students. So financially support. But I think another thing, we were talking about it earlier, is the whole thing about making uh, Twitter learning, making that PD something that is worth, you know, hey, we're going to give you credit for that. Get get that opportunity for teachers to, to learn outside of the district. You know, you have to take these trainings. Well, let them go outside and because personal PD should be personal. Yes. And, and it should also be tech coach. I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking if I had a six thing, it would be find another school district and attend their PD day to see how they mm. do it. Right. There's so many different things that we can do here. And again, we want to know, guys, uh, find us over on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach. Let us know how your professional development is going. And we'd like to make sure that we are meeting up. We're going to be at ISTE this year on only three weeks. We can't wait. Don't forget, we have our 830 a.m. educational podcasting workshop. We have our 1230 on Saturday uh, tech coaching workshop on Monday. We're going to be doing a one hour podcasting how to, and we are going to be all over the place doing uh, great stuff. I might even be uh, running after Claudio with a microphone as he's running after somebody else with a camera. You never <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> know what's going on with all this stuff. Um, Claudio, thank you so much for coming on today. I am so excited to have you guys here. Um, one last time, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Claudio Zavala Jr. My website is IamClaudius.com and on YouTube, 
facebook.com forward slash I am Claudius. And all the links are going to be in our archives over at askthetechcoach.com. This is episode number 52. Guys, if you're over on teachercast.net, check it out. If you're looking at a page and it looks kind of funny, I want you to know that I am in the middle of a major redesign, hopefully going to be launching by ISTE. We are making Podcasting World. And when I wrap Podcasting World up, we're going to be making Tech Coach World. To get ready for our 2019 Ask the Tech Coach Mastermind, Nick and I have got some great things up our sleeve, and we can't wait to have him come back onto the show. Uh, Nick is actually right now in the middle of moving. And so he'll still be out. Probably he'll be back after ISTE when we, he gets all settled and his house is all nice and he gets his uh, his podcasting set up done. So, guys, we want to say thank you for joining us on the show today. We want to say thank you for making TeacherCast your home for professional development. And on behalf of Claudio and Nick and everybody here on the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. 